Hiya TF2 fans, it's Benji here, and today I'm going to be showing you an advanced medic technique that is commonly seen in competitive Highlander and Sixers gameplay, building uber optimally. Building uber optimally is an often misunderstood technique that seems pointless in hindsight, but is actually a very useful skill to have in a medic's arsenal. It's difficult to accomplish effectively at first, but once mastered, it is often the difference between a good medic and a great one. Before we start, if you're brand new to medic, do yourself a favour and please check this box in the advanced options, then set the FOV to 110. You'll be glad that your TF2 experience will change for the better, trust me. So what is building uber optimally, why is it important, and how does one achieve it? Building uber optimally is where you are building your uber charge as fast as you possibly can. This is very important as it means your team can both execute more uber pushes in the match and will give you a safety net from dying quicker should someone ever put you in a do or die state. When using the Medigun or Kritzkrieg, there are two different build speeds, slow and fast. If you're always building fast, it will take 40 seconds to build uber, otherwise known as an optimal build. However, if you are always building slow, it will take double that at 80 seconds, twice as long, or one uber for every two the other team will get, which will make a huge difference in gameplay. Because of his massive downside, the goal that we want to be achieving is to be at the fast rate as much as humanly possible, and avoiding the slow rate at all costs. So how does your uber rate slow down? There are multiple ways that this can happen. The first way is if your heal target is at 142.5% HP or higher. To encourage medics to heal more than one person, if someone is fully buffed and you keep healing that person, your uber build rate will instantly slow down by 50%, which is disastrous due to medics on the other team having the same toolkit as you. As a result, whenever you see these numbers show up on the screen for each class, that is your cue to change heal targets as fast as possible. No seriously, turn on your speed run mindset and make sure that you're doing this within milliseconds of your target being fully buffed. Otherwise, it is time that will add up and result in seconds of uber rate time that could have been saved. If there are no more players to overheal, then it is completely okay to keep healing the same target. Just look around in case there's new targets to heal. Other examples of ways your uber charge time will slow down are if two medics healing the same person or said person is being healed by other sources, such as friendly dispensers or the payload cart. As you can see, this slows down the recharge rate significantly. However, the worst thing you can do to not build quickly is actually not using your medigun to heal in the first place. If you're running around uber sawing spies, arrowing players that don't need to be arrowed, or being next to someone without using your medigun, you're wasting time that could be spent on building your uber to 100%. Crossbow building does work, but it is faster and easier to just use the medigun's beam instead. In effect, you build uber around 2% slower overall for every arrow hit, or 4% for every arrow missed, which is, while only a marginal increase, your call to determine whether healing faster at the cost of building a little slower is worth the risk. Building uber quickly, changing heal targets correctly, healing people away from dispensers, this is quite a lot to take in, right? Well, what if I told you that there are some techniques you can use to keep building optimally with little effort? One great way to do this is to have someone damage themselves. As long as the player keeps below 142.5% HP and isn't being healed by other sources, building uber becomes extremely quick and easy to the point where this has become a meta staple in the Sixers competitive format. Even Sun Weapon's downsides can be used to your advantage as a tool to build uber quickly. Examples of these are the Fist of Steel, Back Scratcher, Equalizer or Escape Plan, Half Satoshi and Boston Basher. The Razorback does not work, stay clear from it. Lastly, switching heal targets at the correct time has been explained before, but this is because it both makes an accumulative impact to your uber build speed, and it's the hardest to truly notice yourself doing during gameplay. Anytime your teammate is above 142.5% HP, and you're still healing that target, that's time being added onto your optimal rate, which we don't want, and can screw you over at the worst possible time. 
Now that we have talked about how building Uber optimally works, let's watch and analyse some in-game examples of bad Uber building versus good Uber building, and why consistently having a fast build time is important for you as a medic. So over here in this clip I am critting the double man and he gets about 2 kills, but as you can see I jump as soon as he starts taking damage, and this will push me back in order to get the health kit. If I hadn't have done that, I would have died before I reached the health kit. Surfing damage and surf projectiles will come in a later episode, but right now I'm trying to find some targets to heal, and I see 4 people pushing the car so I decide to go over there. As soon as um, I see anyone else I heal him straight away because the heavy is on the payload car which will make me build slightly less. However I have to be healing people on the car because there's nobody else and them two have been ubered so healing two people at the same target will load my heal build weight as I mentioned before. So right now I'm just healing everyone else and just looking for other targets that aren't fully buffed. Just following the examples I said before. I see someone taking damage so I take priority onto there and then my friend says we need to use over here, we need to crit over here. So I follow the guy. We activate the crits and there's a sentry in the way so we didn't really get much. But we just have to keep going. But later on we start to realise there's a sniper in the back. And this is a great time to use the Ubersaw because it was just him alone. So I decided to take a risk and go for it. I get a couple of kills on the scout here, he follows me and I steal the sniper alone so I go for some saws. Uber soaring isn't really recommended for building, it's very risky, but if it works off, works out, it's really really helpful. So we're about to have, so I focus on optimal building as fast as I can here. I want to build as fast as possible before we cap the point. And as I cap the point, we use crits and, well, my friend here wreaks havoc, destroying everybody and ends up being a team wipe. And that's why building Uber is extremely important and why you need to do it really fast. In this example, I actually just started recording my 6 hour stint, surprisingly, and I just get on and I check the scoreboard to see who's dead and if I should push up. Everyone's dead, so I play passive here, I just spawned in so I don't know what's going to happen. Um, I decide to switch to Uber and this is where the building is going to begin. I walk in and I notice no one's about, so I focus on the sniper and wait for people to be around before I heal anyone else. The pyro gets really aggressive, so I back out straight away and I only can heal one guy, which is fine because he's taking damage, I don't have to switch targets. Someone else is in combat, so I switch him over, and the very moment he's 260, which is the maximum health he can have, I switch targets. Otherwise, he'll be above 142.5% HP. I switch to the heavy, because he has crit heals, and he's just about to engage in the combat. I wait until he's about 450 and switch over, and we're about 75% already, which is really, really good. As soon as I say 185, I switch over, switch to the other guy, but they're both 185. I nail a straight, really good arrow, but since they're both 185, I need to find someone else to heal. But they're all too far away, so this is an example where I need to build slow to risk, otherwise I'm going to die to the sniper sightline where that sniper's locking right now. That sniper just kills the medic, which is really great for us, and we build Uber in record time. So unlike the other examples shown, this is an official RGL 6s match for the main division, where there's constant coordination and you're playing against some of the best TF2 players in the world. Because their medic used Uber while I still had 25% of mine, I let the team know that we're going to have Uber before their team will. Due to this Uber advantage, the other team has to put a sentry down in defence, and we have to build uber fast to both maintain this advantage, and so we can use it before the sentry is upgraded to level 3. Unlike in casual, the players will help me maintain optimal building, and I can do the same by switching targets when needed as shown above. When we have uber, I heal everyone up, and we use it. Unfortunately, I don't see the wall in my way, and, and I couldn't save our soldier, but since we have the uber advantage and their medic died, we're able to capture the point without a problem. With all of this being said, there isn't a real perfect way to play Medic, without having any hindsight when watching your own clips, and the amount of responsibility, including all of the pressure that Medic brings to the table, there's going to be a time where you mess up, die when you don't necessarily need to, or you miss an arrow onto someone at the worst time. It happens to the best of us, and please don't let that affect the way you play or how you approach TF2 as a whole. So to recap, We've managed to both explain why building uber optimally is important, how to always keep within that fast build speed, and how you can put all of this together to become a monster in casual and competitive game modes. With all this in mind, 
Come back soon for another advanced medic guide that will really take your game to the next level. See you later, guys. The best part was when the pyro backed off the entire map in fear from two medics chasing him.